Today I'm going to show you some basic soldering tools and techniques. Soldering is an especially useful skill when it comes to speaker building and really with just working on any electronics at all. First and foremost, the most important thing when it comes to soldering is a good soldering iron. This is the Weller WE1010NA digital soldering station and this is by far the best investment I've made when it comes to working on electronics. In the past I used the cheap Radio Shack soldering irons which get the job done, but having a temperature controlled soldering iron is a game changer. These go for about $130 on Amazon, but believe me, they are well worth it. There's also butane powered soldering irons which are really good for portable applications. These run off just butane lighter fluid so they're perfect if you have to solder something away from an outlet. Now as far as tools go, you're definitely going to need a nice pair of wire strippers. These are the automatic style which work very good, but the regular style work perfectly fine as well. These also have built-in wire cutters, but it's still also nice to have a separate pair of side cutters. Now as far as solder goes, you can get away with just using one thickness, but it's nice to have a couple different sizes just for smaller or bigger applications. Most solder already has flux in it, but it's nice to keep some extra on hand. Flux just helps the solder flow a little bit better. Also, depending on your application, you may want to use heat shrink tubing to cover up those nice shiny new solder joints. Now let's move on to what I'm actually going to solder. This is an auxiliary cable with a bad end that I'm going to repurpose to make into a cable that I need. I recently purchased the Clio Pocket measurement system and it only uses one RCA for an output. A lot of the stuff I measure just uses a 3.5mm jack input which is stereo, so I needed a cable to go from one RCA output to a stereo input for all my amplifiers. And this cable with an RCA jack on the end will work perfectly. To begin with, we're going to cut off the bad end of the cable. I want to keep this cable as long as possible, so I'm going to cut it as close to the end as I can. Now using our wire strippers, we're going to strip off about a quarter of an inch insulation. This exposes the three conductors that are wrapped in this aluminum foil type stuff. I'm going to cut this stuff away to expose the three conductors to make them easier to work on. And since this was originally a stereo cable, you have your one ground wire and then your two positive wires for your right and left signals. Next I'm going to strip the insulation off of both of our positive wires. This is where using the automatic strippers can be a little bit tricky. Because this is a pretty heavily jacketed cable, it's a little bit hard to actually get it into the strippers just to strip the piece that you want to. This is where the traditional style of wire strippers would actually be a little bit more convenient to use. Now because this end of the cable is going to be mono, I'm going to twist both of the positive wires together to make them one. Next I'm going to put the piece of wire into this thing called a third hand. This is very useful for securely holding down the piece that you're actually going to solder to to make it easier to work on. Now I'm going to double check my connections using the continuity test of my multimeter to make sure the thing's hooked up how I want it to be. Okay, now we can actually get onto soldering. Here I'm adding flux to the bare wires just to help the solder flow while I tin them. Tinning is the process of individually putting solder on the pieces you're working on before you actually put them together. This makes soldering two pieces together a lot faster and a lot easier. And like I mentioned earlier, most solder actually has flux built into it, so in this case I actually added a little bit too much flux that I needed to wipe off afterwards. Now when working on connectors with plastic housings, it's very important that you don't keep the heat on them too long, or you will melt the plastic and compromise the connector. Now with both of our pieces tinned, we can start to combine them together. And once again, it is very important not to get the connector too hot. Here I actually forgot a step. This is a two-piece RCA connector that screws together. And I forgot to put the part that screws together over the wires before I soldered it to the connector. This would obviously make it impossible to put together after it's soldered. So I had to unsolder it and then thread the wire through the cap. Okay, now I should be ready to actually solder the wires to the connector. I realized though that the bare wires are just a little bit too long for how I want to solder them together, so I decided to trim off just a little bit off each wire. Now I'm actually ready to join the two together. Now you want to be as quick and as careful as possible with the tip of the iron, not to melt any of the wire insulation or the plastic housing itself. Now after you melt the solder, you're going to want to hold it in place for a few seconds to make sure that the solder solidifies where you want it to. Now for these top two wires, I'm actually putting tension up on the cable to push the bare wires onto the connector while the solder solidifies. If your wire does move around while it's solidifying, it could cause what's called a cold solder joint. That just means it looks like it's soldered, but it's actually not making a connection. Here I'm just inspecting both of the solder joints, and both of them look pretty good, so I'm going to call this okay. For me, this last step was optional. 
because this is going to be a pretty light duty cable, I'm not really too worried about crimping the actual connector to the jacket of the cable. This just ensures that if the cable does get tugged on, it's pulling on the outside of the cable and not the solder joints on the inside. So for mine, I'm just going to lightly crimp it together. And then I just screwed the end of the cable cap on. And that's it, now I have a finished cable. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, make sure to check out my web store at loudlabsaudio.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.